Hello everyone. I hope all of you are doing well. My name is Jibran Heather and I am a researcher at Swansea University. Before starting, I would first like to thank Yosef for organizing this online event. I think uh, it's a really great initiative which helps to bring uh, all of the open form community together. The topic I'm going to present today might come off as a surprise to many of you because it does not concern fluids at all. I'll be talking about an open source explicit solid dynamics toolkit which we have been developing for the past few years for OpenFoam. This work was mostly done as part of my PhD degree in collaboration with Dr. Lee, Professor Hill, Professor Bonnet and Professor Huerta. The outline of this uh, presentation is shown here. I'll start off with a brief uh, background to the topic uh, and then I'm going to present uh, the governing equations involved in this formulation followed by the numerical methodology. Then the open source uh, toolkit will be presented uh, like its uh, layout, structure and how to install it and use it. This will be followed by an extensive set of numerical results followed by some conclusions. So let's begin with the motivation. The idea here is to develop a numerical tool which is capable of simulating fast solid dynamic behavior. By this I mean uh, solving f uh, large deformations in a small period of time uh, which will enable us to solve challenging industrial problems such as shown here. For example, this car crash analysis in an automotive industry Implosion of a large tank subjected to internal pressure. Underwater explosion affecting the structural integrity of a ship. Or in terms of biomedical applications, inflation of this stent inside a human artery to unblock blood flow. So what have we got in terms of the available technology to solve these problems? Uh, we have the standard displacement based finite element and finite volume formulations which are extensively used in commercial software packages. All of these come with some intrinsic drawbacks uh, such as when linear tetrahedral elements are employed uh, we suffer from volumetric locking in nearly incompressible materials. It also leads to hourglassing modes for under integrated hexahedral elements. Thirdly, since stresses and strains are derived variables, their order of convergence is one order less than that of displacements, which are the primary variables. And finally, they suffer from poor performance in shock-dominated scenarios. So our objective is to develop a low-order numerical scheme, which is capable of overcoming all these drawbacks. Therefore, what we propose is a mixed formulation for solid dynamics. It is based on a set of first-order hyperbolic conservation laws which is similar to the one used in the computational fluid dynamics community. The discretization is uh, based on a self-centered finite volume method where the governing equations are presented in a total Lagrangian form. The formulation is entitled TOUCH. It stands for Total Lagrangian Upwind Cell-Centered Finite Volume Method for Hyperbolic Conservation Laws. The formulation has been implemented in open form code as a supplementary toolkit and is available to the public through the platform GitHub. Some features of this touch scheme are that uh, we use a mixed explicit dynamics uh, platform. You can simulate large strain deformation Complex constitutive models can be incorporated without a problem. It suffers from no locking in nearly incompressible materials. Uh, you have excellent performance uh, in parallel uh, simulations. And finally, and most importantly, you have second order convergence for stresses and strains. Now I'm going to show you a quickly a simulation of this rubber block where you punch it in quarter domain and you see how it deforms. So here you see the smooth pressure distribution in the domain. So let's 
talk about how you can achieve this. So the governing equations involved, the first one is the standard dynamic equilibrium equation or the conservation of linear momentum where P is the uh, linear momentum which is a product of uh, the material density and the velocity field and here you have the material divergence of capital P the first Euler Kirchhoff stress tensor which depends on F the deformation gradient tensor and then you have the body forces the second one is the deformation gradient tensor so this is the geometric conservation law where F is the deformation gradient tensor and it's shown here. Additionally, you could include other equations such as the cofactor of deformation H shown here or the Jacobian of deformation J or you could also include the total energy equation. Now if you combine all these equations, uh, you can summarize them in this first order hyperbolic system of conservation laws where u is the vector of conserved variables, f are your normal fluxes, and s is the source term. With this we aim to bridge the gap between computational fluid dynamics and computational solid dynamics. Moving on to the numerical methodology, and firstly we'll talk about the spatial discretization so keeping in mind our system of hyperbolic conservation laws we apply that onto an arbitrary element or control volume where u e are your unknown variables and the centroid of this uh, element on the right hand side you have this uh, omega naught e which is the initial uh, volume material volume and you have integral of the right hand side on this volume. Now you apply the cost divergence theorem. You get uh, convert this uh, volume integral into surface integral and what you are left with are the normal fluxes which need to be determined in order to compute your unknown variable. Now we have a couple of options how to calculate this. The first one is the standard Kudinov type self-centered finite volume method where your fluxes are located at the centroid of the phases and you have the area normal vectors CEF um, which are shown here. The another alternative option is to have a nodal self-centered finite volume method where your fluxes now are located at the nodes instead of the faces and correspondingly you have nodal area vectors. Now you can expand your governing equations and what you get is this set of equations where your unknowns are the co uh, contact tractions and the contact linear momentum. Similarly for nodal framework you have contact elemental nodal linear uh, attraction and nodal linear momentum. In this presentation, I'll just be focusing on the standard Kudinov type self-centered finite volume method to keep things simple. So let's see how we can evaluate this contact traction and contact linear momentum. Moving on to the flux computation, we could employ a Riemann solver to compute the fluxes which depends on the values at either side of the interface denoted by this negative and positive signs. So the first thing which comes to mind is uh, just to use an average of the fluxes on either side of the interface. But we already know that this, this is unstable. So we need to add an upwinding uh, stabilization in order to damp the instabilities arising from the first term. So here you have A which is the flux Jacobian matrix shown here and I'm not going to go into details of how to uh, compute uh, evaluate this and when you use this acoustic Riemann solver what you can obtain are the expressions for the fluxes which are the contact linear momentum and contact traction. So as you can see in both these equations the first terms show the average part and the second terms show the stabilization part. 
Here S are the stabilization matrices shown here where CP is the pressure wave speed in the domain and CS is the shear wave speed. The small n uh, denotes the spatial uh, normals. Now if you know how to compute this negative and positive states on either side of the interface, you are able to evaluate the fluxes. So the interface states are obtained by using a least square gradient operator and a Bath and Jesperson slope limiter. This ensures second order spatial accuracy. Now I'm going to talk about something which is important, uh, the involutions. So we'll just recall the two equations that I showed in the beginning of the presentation. One is the conservation of the deformation gradient and the other one is the conservation of cofactor of deformation. These two equations are repeated here and we know that these come with these uh, involutive constraints that the curl of f dot and the divergence of h dot should be zero which can be seen from the equations. Now these two conditions need to be satisfied by your space-time uh, operator in order to guarantee a stable uh, numerical response over a long-term period. So we have got three involution-free methodologies. The first two concern the Godunov type uh, method. Uh, the first one is based on a constraint uh, transport algorithm and the other one is based on a penalization scheme. To find out more about these schemes, you can refer to these two papers. The third one is an adaptation of the nodal glaze scheme. So we call it the extended glaze scheme uh, and it fulfills involutions by construction. To find out more about the Glaze scheme, you can refer to these papers. Moving on to the temporal discretization, now we employ a standard uh, one step, two stage explicit Runge Kota time integrator shown here with two stages. And it comes with the stability constraint on the time increment, which is based on the uh, CFL number, your minimum characteristic length in the domain, and CP max, which is the maximum pressure wave speed in the domain. Now, by employing this, we ensure a second order accuracy in time as well. Moreover, if we want to conserve angular momentum, we can also apply a posterior projection procedure to conserve it. Let's move on to the open source toolkit now. Um, this is the uh, link of the GitHub repository of the toolkit, so you can obtain uh, the code from there. And this is how it looks at the moment. The structure of the toolkit is very similar to uh, the one found in the uh, official open form releases. So you, I follow the same structure with applications containing solvers and utilities, and bulk of the co uh, source code is included in the SRC directory and it also comes with a list of tutorials. So the important thing is at the moment uh, uh, this uh, code is uh, compatible with the OpenFOAM Foundation releases version 4, 5 and 6. Regarding implementation, it makes use of the inherent parallel computing techniques in OpenFOAM so you can run on a parallel architecture easily. Um, I've included custom boundary conditions for fixed, roller and free boundaries. There are several challenging test cases that you can run to check uh, how robust the code is. Uh, it also comes with automated uh, build checks using uh, Travis CI. So whenever we push anything into the GitHub repository, it will be checked on all the uh, platform it, uh, yeah, it is compatible with. And then if you want to compile it, you just run this all wmake uh, script. The solvers at the moment are based on only the C-touch scheme and uh, linear elastic, hyperelastic new hook and, and one means this plasticity models are incorporated at the moment. I have also started developing the documentation so you can find some uh, documentation on how to install, run tutorials and some other questions. So for example, the tutorials uh, you can go here and it will show you the layout which is very similar to the existing open form tutorials 
you have the zero directory with initial boundary conditions the constant directory uh, where uh, you have the mechanical properties run parameters and then uh, the thumb tutorials are provided with uh, mesh file uh, with element counts and sometimes the dot geo uh, file geometry gmesh geometry file is also provided if you want to uh, make some changes in the uh, geometry Uh, in the constant directory, you have the mechanical properties such as density, Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio, and in the run parameters file, there are some uh, information uh, relevant to the test case you are solving. In order to solve it, you just need to run the script to launch the simulation, and when you want to clean it, you can use the clean script and prepare for a fresh run. Now let's move on to the numerical results. First we'll check the convergence of the scheme. So this is a simple problem of deformation of a cube. So it's initially deformed and you let it go. And this is how it uh, uh, deforms with the pressure distribution. Now you can see uh, here the convergence of velocities and stresses with the L2 norm errors. And the dashed line shows the second order convergence. So all three schemes uh, show second order convergence for both velocities and stresses which is important next we will benchmark to this twisting column problem so you have a column fixed at the bottom and free on all the other sides and you initialize with an initial angular um, velocity field and you can see the highly nonlinear deformation uh, of the column and as you refine the mesh you can see the deformation is fairly similar uh, but of course you have uh, pressure, uh, better pressure distribution and here it's a comparison against alternative schemes so the first three schemes are the ones I have shown you in this uh, presentation the in-house implementation in open form the other two are well-known final element schemes the b-bar method and the Taylor road q to q1 element and the last two are in-house uh, particle method implementations with JSTSPH and SUPGSPH so all of them show very good comparison in terms of deformation and also pressure distribution moving on to the parallel performance of the scheme so here you see a uh, scalability uh, tests so the speed up shows very good uh, results uh, over here you can see that a speed up of over 200 is achieved uh, on just 512 cores uh, where just 6 million cells are utilized so of course you can go to higher uh, speed ups if you employ uh, use more uh, finer meshes and then the parallel efficiency of the scheme is shown here which also looks very good now I'll talk about some one misses plasticity as well so we have a benchmark problem in literature which is uh, this Taylor impact uh, problem so you have a copper bar which is impacted against the surface at a very high velocity of 227 meters per second and what you see is uh, this uh, evolution of the pressure wave in the initial deformation phases this is something which is very difficult to capture and we have been able to capture this so let's have a look at the simulation so on the left you have the pressure distribution in the middle are the one which is stresses and on the right is the plastic uh, strain in the domain again the results show no oscillations pressure oscillations and no locking at all Now we have got a comparison of the three cell-centered methodologies that uh, we have shown in this presentation. Uh, the C-touch, B-touch and X-ray schemes, as you can see, the results are very similar for both pressure and one misses stresses. We also monitor the evolution of the radius um, of this column. So as you can see, with the dashed lines showing coarser meshes, as you refine to the continuous line 
they are all on top of each other and converge to a value of uh, 7 mm at the final time. Let's talk about some more complex problems of thin wall structures. So here we have a stent like structure shown here which is very thin just 0.1 mm thickness and you crush it by applying traction on the top and bottom surfaces. So what you obtain is uh, this deformation at the final time. And let's see the simulation. So this is how it uh, deforms and you can again see the smooth uh, pressure distribution. So we have done some mesh refinement and as you can see you refine from almost 7000 cells to 43000 cells and still you get similar deformation but you have got a slightly better pressure uh, distribution which is expected. Next problem is implosion of a bottle. So you have this bottle which is subjected to internal pressure and uh, when it deforms, you see the uh, deformation of this uh, bottle at the final uh, time over here. So let's have a look at how it deforms. So here you can see the wrinkling, nonlinear wrinkling and uh, deformation of the bottle with very smooth pressure distribution both on the outside and the interior uh, of the bottle. Again, we do a mesh refinement. So here you see the deformation and the pressure distribution for a cell of uh, 0.25 uh, million cells. And as you refine to 0.43 million, you get mm, practically similar deformation with uh, better pressure re resolution. The last example is of a crushing of a thin uh, cylinder. This is a very complicated problem because the outer diameter to thickness ratio of this uh, cylinder is like 800, which is uh, extreme. And you deform the top surface of this cylinder according to the velocity profile given here. And what you observe is highly non-linear deformation uh, modes at different uh, times which can be better visualized by the simulation. So if you see here, you see this uh, region in red, zoomed over here, and how the top surface deforms and how the different deformation modes can be observed. Again, with very smooth pressure distribution and uh, no pressure locking. So in order to make sense, uh, our, if our results make sense, we refine and you can see as you refine, you the last two results show very similar deformation. Finally, I would like to conclude this presentation. Uh, what I've presented here is a total Lagrangian cell-centered finite volume scheme for explicit fast solid dynamic applications. It employs an acoustic upwind Riemann solver, which is very cheap, and it is used to employ uh, to evaluate the contact fluxes. Very important that the velocities and stresses display the same rate of convergence. So, if your interest is in stresses, then this would be uh, this employing this uh, methodology would be really useful. And as you can see in the various simulations, it's robust scheme without uh, locking and pressure checkerboarding. As part of the ongoing work, we are working on various fronts. The first one is the ability to handle tetrahedral and polyhedral uh, elements, which is very useful for complicated geometries. Secondly, we are employing an, an a Rose Riemann solver, which will enable us to capture shocks uh, more accurately. And uh, at the other front is working on a unified computational framework for fluid structure interaction. So if you want to learn more about this work, you can 
uh, follow these uh, publications um, and in addition you can visit my website for more details and with this I would like just like to thank all of you for staying around and listening to this uh, talk thank you very much